Hi everyone and welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Already the boys have played three games and their next challenge is the Swans on Saturday night at Adelaide Oval. Coming up in today's show, we discover how a modern day professional footballer still finds time to hold down a day job. And making sense of all those match day statistics. It's, it's got to the stage now where you can nearly find a, a stat that will suit your argument. There's that many stats. But first, elite athletes often excel at multiple sports. Occasionally they make career defining moves, such as Josh Jenkins and Ricky Henderson choosing football over basketball. The latest to swap sports is Hugh Greenwood, a junior hoops prodigy who wants to break into the AFL as a crow. Hugh represented Australia at three Junior World Basketball Championships. He tasted life with the National Senior Team and US College Basketball. But he was also a talented junior footballer, representing Tasmania at the under-16 national titles. The Crows have tracked his progress and kept in contact for many years. Last year, he was invited to training and later offered a two-year rookie contract. As for his long hair, there's a good reason for that. Yeah, so I um, grew my hair um, in honour of breast cancer, so my mum's got uh, terminal secondary breast cancer, so uh, it's just something that I initially started a fundraiser in the States and um, my coach shaved his head and sort of at the end of that phase, the end of you know raising a good amount of money, I was going to shave my head, it's still here at the moment. I think my fundraiser in the States raised about $75,000 for breast cancer. Um, so yeah, it's you know I get a lot of, lot, lot of stick from it, um, but there's a reason behind it and that's, you know, I do it in honour of my mum and, and raising money for breast cancer. Greenwood, tough shot, beat it. Away, gets it to goal. It's been probably eight and a half, almost nine years since I last played competitive footy. Yeah, it's been a big change, obviously going from a completely different sport, going from basketball to footy. It's just, um, it's been difficult. It certainly had its challenges, but um, the expectations that I had coming in have been exceeded. The boys have been fantastic, really embracing and coaches as well. Obviously, it's going to take some time. Um, I understand it's it's a marathon and not a sprint, but early days it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. Measures the pass, finds Greenwood, the ex-basketballer. Spending most of my time on the forward line, but with the sample cap this year, spending a bit more time in the midfield as well. So depending on the, the motor that I build, obviously you know footy is a very uh, aerobic sport. So um, if I can develop um, that my motor and my tank, hopefully moving to that midfield just. Basketball, everything's sort of been in close, so I feel more comfortable winning and around stoppages, so, but wherever the coaches put me. I want to play as many as I can, that's the only way to improve. Obviously not playing for nine years, you know, the best way to improve is to play, so that comes down to me taking care of my body, taking care of everything off the field, and then, you know, performing at a high level as well. It's, you know, it's an elite environment, you know, the Sample's an incredibly competitive league, so I know that my teammates there expect me to compete and play hard there as well, so for me it's just about playing games and getting better each week. Obviously, JJ and Lynch are massive into their American sports. You know, they invited me into their fantasy league early on in the year. Um, and then Sam, uh, big source, invited me into his basketball fantasy league as well. And out the March Madness, the NCAA stuff's going on. Everyone's picking, picking my brain apart. It's, you know, it's good fun. It's something that, you know, I stopped enjoying playing, but I still enjoy watching it as much as possible. So it's, it's fun to still talk that and get away from footy a little bit too. There's no doubt Adelaide Oval is a world-class stadium. In recent weeks, it has hosted an artistic light show, a Soccer World Cup qualifier and AFL games, as well as its share of cricket over the summer. Keeping the playing surface in tip-top shape is an enormous task, as we found out. It never stops. We've, uh, we've gone from uh, Group F, Festival Arts, here late uh, February. Um, we then rolled into the Socceroos last uh, Thursday night, uh, followed up with the first AFL game here on Easter Sunday. Uh, and that's off the back of a, an amazing cricket season with Big Bash, uh, T20 International, the day-night test match, um, ACDC concert product of that. So it's, it's never ending and it's, uh, it's great for South Australia. We, we've got a great team here. Um, you know, it's about 140 full-time staff. We employ up to about uh, 1,800 casual staff um, and contractors who work together to turn this place around. Damien Hoff and his team, uh, you know, they're, they're first class. They, they do an amazing job. Um, I guess he learnt from one of the best in, in Les Burdett from a, a cricketing point of view. He's got Dave Egan as his 2IC who um, came from Amy Stadium and, and knows the turf down there inside out. Changing the goalposts, uh, changing the lines on the ground, um, covering the turf to protect it. We've got a turf farm down at Langhorn Creek um, with exactly the same turf prepared down there so if we do need to bring turf in after a major event uh, then we can do that. We, we had to do that a few weeks ago 
and there are some patches out there at the moment um, where we've had replacement turf. In terms of how the oval plays, it's absolutely fine. Um, there's no safety issues whatsoever, but it's just not the turf. Um, you know, to turn around this stadium, you got a you know, maintenance team that behind the scenes makes sure everything's working the whole time. Our food and beverage team, it, you know, they, it's a massive operation here in food and beverage to turn it around from one event to another, making sure the products uh, align with a particular event and making sure that uh, the, the, the stadium is a presentable position. You're watching The Crow Show. After the break, Alana introduces us to the young crow who can't get enough of hard work. And after such a promising start as a forward, how did Ben Rutten finish up in defence? Welcome back. When most AFL players have a day off, they like to put their feet up and rest their bodies. Not Mitch Grigg. The tough on baller prefers to flex his muscles as a landscape gardener. Little one to Grigg, he's already got one. Yeah, he's got another. On game day, Mitch Grigg strives for speed. On his days off though, he sets a more leisurely pace. You know, I mean, I've always been a bit of an outside person. Um, not really one to sit inside and um, you know, sit around and watch some TV or watch a movie or whatever. When the work boots replace his footy boots, Mitch's day begins at 7am and he downs tools about four. It's been that way for the past two years. I feel like uh, it actually helps me a bit um, with my body and doesn't, I don't seize up as much during the day off by sitting around doing, doing not much. Mitch played five consecutive games early last season, but after missing six weeks with an ankle injury, he finished the year in the sample, where he was the club's leading McGarry medal vote winner. McGarry votes don't really get your spot in the side, so um, you know, I'm, just, I'm just worrying about playing my role for the team. Determined to break back into the AFL team, Mitch knows what he has to do. Just got to keep working on my defensive transition, um, you know, running both ways and, and running at speed. I mean, I'm not blessed with speed, but um, you know, my aerobic capacity should, should help me get up to those speeds. So, um, you know, I just got to keep working hard and, and um, get a bit of the ball inside. When Mitch Grigg eventually plays his last game, it's not hard to imagine how he'll spend his days. The best thing about um, landscaping is coming into something that the client or uh, whoever you may be doing it for isn't happy with and then um, leaving it looking amazing and, and something that um, really puts a smile on you know, the people you're working for's uh, face. So I think that's, that's what I get out of it the most. Ben Rutten's first three kicks in AFL football were goals. That was back in 2003. Fast forward 11 years and his final kick for the Crows was also a goal. In between, he earned a reputation for being one of the game's best defenders, gaining All-Australian selection in 2005. Truck, as he was affectionately known, is now an assistant coach at Richmond. It's an illustrious club. Can Ben Rutten join it? First kick in league. Footy's a goal. Yeah, look, I started my played my first couple of games up in the forward line, and uh, first game against Fremantle over in Perth, and was uh, yeah, was pretty lucky to be able to uh, kick three goals with my first three kicks there. But um, yeah, my time in the forward line didn't last very long, and found my way to full back pretty quickly. It wasn't a foreign position for me, so I was probably where I was most suited, and uh, yeah, it was just. A little bit ironic to make my, you know, my career out there, but um, it was uh, it was a good defence to be a part of. They have scored a massive victory and the surprising season of the Crows goes on. It was a, a great year. I mean, it was uh, Neil Craig's first year as coach. Uh, we hadn't made the finals in 2004, so. Uh, to then finish with, uh, you know, at the time, a club record 17 wins, minor premiership was, uh, yeah, it was a terrific achievement. And uh, you know, I was only a young guy at the time, and thinking, Jesus, this will, uh, you know, we're, this will just keep happening. But unfortunately, uh, it doesn't always play out that way. So it was definitely a missed opportunity looking back. And I played on some really good footballers and really good forwards, captains of footy club, and uh, yeah, I had a, a great, some really good contests against Warren Treadray and. Uh, 
and the showdowns are always great games in Adelaide to play on. So, um, Moran Treadray, Jonathan Brown, uh, Barry Hall, Lance Franklin, you know, and there's such a, uh, a list of really good players, so it's hard to, t- hard to say one. He handballs off to Rutt. Oh, there he is. Well, what about this for a fairy tale finish? His last kick may be, and he's kicked the goal. First three kicks were goals, and my last kick was a goal, and uh, there's probably about uh, five goals in between all those, so uh, it wasn't much of a goal kicking career, but it was uh, yeah, nice to be, able to, to be able to kick one in my last game. Yeah, for me, it was the right decision to, to go from Adelaide and come to Melbourne and experience a different culture. and being part of a, a really good successful footy club both on the field and off the field you know um, yeah it's it's a great part of Melbourne to be a part of and really enjoying it so far. The club's far-reaching search for state league top-up players has delivered high honours to one country footballer. Luke Carey was recruited from Achunga in the Hills competition. After impressing everyone at West Lakes, he's now been elevated to captain of the Crows Sample side. Back with a fly too. Good hands, Luke Carey, Crow skipper. So I grew up in Streaky Bay on the west coast of South Australia. Um, played football over there for the West Coast Hawks. Um, and after that, I moved to Adelaide when I was 17 to play football with Port Magpies. Um, I was there for about five years. Um, after that, I left and went up and played football with Achunga in the Hills Football League. So um, oh, it was great to get a second chance when Heath rang me. I'd come up here straight away. Um, yeah, couldn't get up here quick enough. Chasing this one back, Luke Carey takes the mark for Adelaide. Even with all the AFL listed guys, I'm still probably a couple of years older than them. Um, experience, I mean, I don't have so much more experience than them, but I feel like I'm a, I'm a bit older than them. They've been great. I mean, if I've ever got a question, I just go up to any of them and they, and they help me out with anything that I need. Um, and the coaches, are, I mean, the, the way that they present the information is just the best, best that you'll see. The Crows are reaching out to kids in a very modern way. We'll tell you how shortly. Also, do all those statistics get in the way of a coach's gut instincts? Welcome back. Players like Tom Lynch are invaluable to any club. Tall, athletic and with good hands, he's a crucial link between defence and attack. In fact, he led the league in goal assists last season as he enjoyed an injury-free year. Thanks to Aussie Ripper Rose, our roving reporter at West Lakes, Brody Smith, caught up with the man they call Tiggs. All right, Tom Lynch, thanks for joining us this week on the Ripper Roast. Thanks for having me, Brody. Uh, coming fresh off a showdown medal, um, obviously had a really good year last year. Do you like continuing your form this year? Yeah, look, obviously it was pleasing last year to play uh, every game and uh, probably the first time I've done that in my career. Obviously, had a bit of injury troubles, but uh, you know, pleasing that I was able to get through another summer and hopefully we can have a good year. You're one of the family men around the club. You've also got young Coates um, and another one on the way. Yep, uh, yeah, so got a three-year-old uh, lad in Kobe. Um, yeah, you've seen him around, the, he's been in a few photos on match day and stuff like that. Um, so he gets around the, the club as much as he can. Um, yeah, and I've got another, another one on the way, so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, it's, really, it's a really good switch off from footy sometimes and uh, now we're loving being over here in Adelaide. You obviously had a couple of nicknames, one of them being 10 Goal Tommy. Are you now referred to as a showdown medalist, or what's what are you running with now? Certainly not. Uh, yeah, that was a that was a bit of a pain that that nickname. But uh, no, I certainly I just get called Tiggs. Uh, I won't go into too too much detail. That or the chief. Uh, my sort of nicknames around the club. And uh, one of the boys said you're yeah, carrying the medal around, charging five bucks a look. Is that <laughs> is that true? Couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> there, Brody. Uh, yeah, it's footy clubs for you, isn't it? Yeah. No worries. Thanks for joining us, Tommy. Thanks, mate. Cheers. For seven in a row, here's Lynch. Kicking for his second, it's all Adelaide. The Crows are capitalising on the AFL's latest move into the digital space, an app designed specifically for kids. The club is creating loads of content, including short videos, memes and jokes, all aimed at attracting the next generation of supporters. 
at the footy club, you know, we want to positively and proactively engage with our youngest supporters in a way that's most meaningful for them. Our newest initiative is a kids app launched by the AFL called Bounce. Um, it's targeted at 5 to 12 year old kids which provides the content that they want. So the focus is on producing uh, memes, short videos, games uh, and you know, interactive content including exclusive access to our players. I think that we're the only AFL club to actually have employed a full-time kids content creator um, which is why the AFL views us as a leader in this space. In schools, uh, we're really proud of the Growing With Gratitude program which was launched last year which will engage with close to 50,000 kids throughout the course of uh, 2016. For our match day, uh, we've got an increasing number of kick and catch opportunities so kids can get on Adelaide Oval for a, a kick of the footy after um, three games in 2016. And of course during the week we launched our Sunday Fun Day concept where kids get uh, free access to Adelaide Oval for our Crows games against Essendon and St Kilda. Kids are the future of this football club and we're going to spend as much time as possible engaging with them in as many ways as possible. Statistics and more statistics. There's no end to the amount of data that coaches can use to dissect games and analyse performances. But how much of it is useful and how much does it cloud a coach's natural instincts? They're some of the questions we put to assistant David Teague in this segment under the coach's roof, brought to you by Revolution Roofing. Oh, look, it's, it's got to the stage now we can nearly find a, a stat that will suit your argument. There's that many stats, but game day and during the week, yeah, obviously you've got certain targets you want to hit. Each line will have certain targets, areas they're focusing on. Game day, we all get a printout of stats, but they're different. So what James Bodziadley gets to what Scott Camparelli gets to what I get are all different. We try and make it really specific. You don't want to have to filter through a lot of information. You want the key stats in your area, and, and it's generally sort of three to four stats, not, not a lot. Uh, for me, I'd probably like to see the game, actually visually see the game and, and the stats will probably often back up what I'm seeing but every now and then you'll have a look at a stat and you won't see it and it'll just jump up at you. Um, as a whole, I'm probably one that probably goes on gut feel of the game and the way the game's trending rather than stats but I've worked with some great coaches that um, have a really good ability to, to see the stats and see the trends already happening as the game's going on. Sometimes it's a really good coaching tool for the players. You can just show them the stat, it might be a tail, you might be going into a game and you want 20 tackles a quarter. That's easy to put up for the players to see where they're at. Does that number change the way they should approach the next contest? It shouldn't, but it's a way to uh, hold the players accountable to, to their effort and, and just keep them focused on something that you're, uh, that you're going into the game with. Still to come on The Crow Show, we zero in on a face in the crowd and share an escape with Kyle Hardigan. Every player has their favourite holiday destination. For Kyle Hartigan, it means a short hop across the ditch. Thanks to Flight Centre, Kyle is happy to share his getaway memories and tells us his next trip will probably be much further afield. My uh, favourite destination would probably be, so far, would be uh, probably Queenstown in New Zealand. I uh, went there this off season, um, sort of. Just, yeah, pretty adrenaline junkie and, um, yeah, it was a great spot in the world and um, very picturesque and that sort of thing, but also a lot of things to do. I really want to go to Egypt and see the pyramids. Um, that would be um, something different and, um, yeah, get over there and check that, check Egypt out. I think that would be pretty cool. Time now to pick out a crow's face in the crowd. If this is you at the showdown, all you need to do is contact the club via email before 5pm on Wednesday and be ready with your photo ID. Then you'll win a merchandise pack thanks to Chemist Warehouse. Next week, we'll catch up with a crow who became a swan. And the mean machine, the young defender with a miserly record. Well, that wraps up today's show, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Don't forget to visit the club website, afc.com.au, for all the latest news and exclusive insights. We look forward to you joining us again next Sunday at 11.30 on 7. Thanks for your company. Bye for now.